Hello and welcome back. Today we're having a look at the Ostara Tarot. And the Ostara Tarot comes in a box which is quite big with a nice enough book. But um, I don't know where they've gone. So I have, I put my Ostara Tarot in a bag that I bought for it. And because Ostara is for the spring, I thought these hairs in the middle of a beautiful flowering crown was totally spot on for it. <laughs> it carries that spring energy. Now the Kataro itself doesn't necessarily carry a spring energy. Um, let's explore it a little bit further. This is going to be a flip through with just a few in impressions. This tarot was designed by four different ladies and I do like it, although there are suits and generally um, cards that I prefer by some artists rather than others, okay? And this is quite obvious quite quickly. So starting with the full, we will start with the full in a minute. Uh, the Gilding on the edge is quite thick and when you first get it, I do have one card actually that's bigger than the other. I don't know if you can make that out and I think it's because of the gilding. Uh, when you first get it, your cards will, will be stuck together so it will be a good idea to be very careful unsticking them because um, I have seen people actually rip their cards which is quite unfortunate on a new deck, okay? So um, just be careful and just maybe slide them like that. You know, if they're stuck together, mine of course have been used quite a bit so they don't stick, but if they're stuck, just, you know, do the, this trick of putting pressure and sliding them out like this, but do it very carefully and very slowly, okay? The stock is quite good. It's actually quite cardy rather than super bendy. It does have some bend, but it is quite cardy. And generally I do like them. There is a bit of a border inside of the image, which you probably can see. And that's okay. I don't notice the border too much, so it doesn't bother me. One thing to notice is that the majors have not been numbered okay so you don't have numbers you have the names for them some of the cards are named at the top and some of the cards are named at the bottom okay and i think that depends on who was designing what if you know what i mean you know because of the four different designers and that's okay some people are put off by that sometimes i'll find myself with a bit of an upside down, um, a bit of a mix of upside and downside reversed. Uh, I do like to read my cards um, normal way up, so I do have to pay attention when I am putting them together. Okay, the flow, remarkably, for the fact that it's got four different artists collaborating, the flow through is actually quite good. Let's have a quick look at the aces and you can see the four artists have very different takes. And let's have the fool as the fifth there. Uh, hopefully you can make that out. All right, so you can see straight away that you do have different artists working, different suits. And so there will be ones that you will gel with straight away and there will be others that just won't make much sense and that you'll have to delve a little bit deeper into, okay? The cars are fairly shiny, so I apologize if you get blinded <laughs> as they reflect the light quite a bit, okay. All right, let's get into our flip through. and fully reversible cards. This is the back. The back is actually really, really nice. 
Okay. And starting with the full. So we're in the major arcana. And already you can see the difference in the artistry. So they came with justice in eighth place, so I've kept it there, and you know how much I like justice as number eight in the major arcana, so that's okay. I actually find that a lot of decks these days have justice in the eighth place. Overall, I do think it's a very fairly traditional tarot. There are some cards that are less traditional, but overall, fairly traditional depictions, uh, they just work. They're fairly easy to read. I find them fairly easy to read. That's in the majors. When we get into the minors, the story changes. The suit of wands is very well depicted and fairly obvious. I do love that they've got that little mouse in, I think, all the aces. Now, you see, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'll keep my thoughts to myself and just keep flipping through. I do love this one. I love this one. This one is excellent. I do quite like the suit of wands in this deck. It does speak to me. I find that it has mm, very um, good energy. Now, you will notice that some of the animals come back in the other suits as well. That's the page. So you'll notice that the name of the suit it does not appear, okay. In the ones, it's fairly easy because the ones are fairly obvious. I love that you have a mix of people and animals as well. Now the cups are one of the more difficult to read suits for me. They're fairly busy. The cups are not always obvious. They are though different. I do love this. It's very uh, anime, you know, onsen, uh, hot baths, hot springs, you know, just, yeah, I like that. White snakes. That one, very opaque for me. I love this one. Very opaque as well. Fairly opaque for me. Page of cups. Okay, the cups are here. They're on the curtain. But you have to kind of be paying attention. And here they just don't appear at all. Nor here. You have to go with the element. The cup is there at the front. Getting into swords. Swords are okay. They're fairly well depicted and fairly straightforward to read. <laughs> Love this one. Really like that one. Hey, hang on. We're missing the eight. Oh, there's the eight. Eight of swords in the wrong place. Falcon with eyes in a bind so that he can't see. He can't move. 
See, this is a good one, right? Depression, yes, but you do still have power and fire. And for me, that Nine of Swords cards does have to have that. Like this a lot. The Knight is very active. Very active. I adore this queen. She's the only one with this sort of symbology. I do love, now she's got a crane next to her and oh, she just works. Suit of Swords is well done. I like him as well. I mean, King of Swords has got to be a bit of a scary dude, you know. It's supposed to kind of challenge you. The pentacles are very good. I love her use of colors. The pentacles do appear. And you get, you know, the same ideas that you get in the Raider Waite Smith. But because you have different people doing the different suits, their understanding of the tarot is also slightly different. Still one of my favorites, still true in this deck. Oh, and this one is amazing. Page of Pentacles, total inspiration. You get the idea of strength and perseverance and just keeping going with this. Hey, you know, she's got a goat, just like in the Thoth Tarot. <laughs> but I like that she's doing all of her own herbs as well. And just quite well done. And yes. <laughs> okay, so overall, it's a good tarot. Is it springy? What makes it spring? What makes it Ostara? I don't know. I think that's a bit of a gimmick for me. Mm, not sure why they chose... Ostara necessarily because it's not I mean it does have animals but I don't find it particularly um, suited to the spring I work with the enchanted taro in the springtime and that suits me better and I do love some of the suits better than others I do struggle a little bit with the depictions on the um, cups because they're not always obvious. Like for me, that ace is just not right. Um, some of the some of these are easier to read than others. Some are amazing. This is on the box. The high priestess is on the box. Uh, it's okay that they haven't numbered the cards, but. Um, the up and down might throw you a little bit, up and down, up and down, okay. There is a teeny bit of symbology on the cards, but not overly, okay. So it's quite a, a fairly basic tarot to read and fairly um, straightforward, should I say. Um, suit of Swords is well done. It does have some good elements, particularly love that queen. For me, is it an exceptional tarot? No. I paid something like 14 or 15 pounds for it, which was about the price that you would want to pay. I wouldn't want to pay any more than that. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't invest in this tarot necessarily, uh, unless you really are digging the art. And even then, I was really digging the art and even then, it's just, I don't know, sometimes likes a little bit of energy, I guess. Um, but it's worth playing around with. I have played around with it quite a bit. And maybe now I don't play around with it as much. I do find that it lacks involvement. Okay, so good for beginners, maybe does have some disadvantages like the suits are not clearly printed out as being swords or you know whatever um, these are not numbered but they are named and these are numbered but not named okay so not a bad tarot for beginner 
if you are into your astrology and into your numerology even, um, because of the different artists tying into this, I don't know, it just feels a little off, okay? So if you're going to read it as a read away, then that's fine. Or if you're going to read it with the book, it's fine. But overall, um, maybe not the most consistent, shall we say, of tarots. That's just my personal opinion. And I just wanted to show you the cards. All right. <laughs> and that's it for now. Thank you.